Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today is the day 35 for our PCNSA series. So we have already covered about the URL filtering and app ID and we have illustrated a lot of uh, testing for how a URL filtering is working, how HTTPS uh, takes a part or how SSL certificate takes a part. I've explained everything related to app ID and URL filtering. If you have not watched, I will link them into i button. You can have a look on that as well. In this video, we are going to understand what is user ID, how exactly it works and what is Windows Server because to understand user ID, you need to understand how Active Directory works. And we are going to also see how the traffic flow will be for user ID to work in Palo Alto, right? So I'll request you to please watch this video till the end so that you can understand how what is the concept behind user ID and how exactly it works and how it is related with Windows Server. And also I'll request you to please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any video from me. So without any further delay, let's get started. So friends, let's understand what is user ID, right? So user identification, how can we identify a user? We'll try to understand here, okay? Now let's say for an example, we have a building and we have multiple floors in that particular building. Now this particular floor is configured with 10.0 this is configured with 20.0 and this is configured as 30.0 slash 24. I'll take to slash 24 for all the floors. Now, if the user is sitting here, he gets this particular IP address. When he moves to this because he can ha he is having a laptop so he can move to another floor. So he'll be getting the IP address from this. And if he moves, he'll get this IP address. So whenever he moves the floor, his IP addresses are getting changed. Now, when we create a policy, let's say for an example, right, we'll be creating policies based on the IP addresses that is there. So source IP address and destination IP address, right? Now we'll be configuring policy based on this IP address. Now, in third floor, we have restricted Facebook, let's say for an example, and in second floor, we have allowed it, right? Now, the user, if he moves from here to here, he can access the Facebook. So, policies are created based on the IP address, not on user ID or identity, right? Let's try to explore this image and we'll try to understand what is trying to say. Now, if you see in this image, the on the source, the user has been called under this or user group has been called under this, right? So we are recognizing the user and no matter whatever the IP address he is having, whenever they that user comes, like I'm not giving access on based of IP address on user group, basically the access will be given to him as per his user, not on the IP address. So identifying will give a more granular control on the traffic which is moving from the user machine towards internet. No matter user is sitting at office or at home, because as we the uh, Palo Alto is checking the user information, he'll be providing access based on it, right? So user ID will help you to understand your user information and then he provide access to you. So this is how exactly it works in real world environment. Now we are going to understand how exactly it works. Basically what happens is when we create policy, right? identity policy we cannot simply provide a single user information so we have to provide what we have to provide a group right why we have to provide the group because let's say in in companies 
देर विल बी अ ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल टू फॉर्म अ टीम देर आर मल्टीपल टीम्स इन द ऑफिस इट सेल्फ देर विल बी सेल्स टीम मार्केटिंग टीम एंड देर आर फर्दर टीम एज वेल आई टी टीम लेट से सर्वर टीम एंड देर मार्केटिंग टीम सेल्स टीम्स राइट so all these teams will have a different different requirements like it team will access the uh, access related to it's sales team needs to access marketing he wants to do a marketing related to um, uh, facebook marketing or any other same way every team has their own way of require requiring that particular access right because uh, it can go to uh, sql uh, zones but the sales department and the marketing department should not go to that right they needs to go to internet to advertise their uh, products and all right so for that reason the group will be formed now we will be calling groups under this particular policy we cannot call a individual username the reason behind let's say if you have a 2000 users in your organization you cannot call one by one right so for that reason we'll call it group okay and we'll provide access but when you see the logs in the logs it will show you the individual username it will not show you as a log it will uh, not as a group it will show you as a individual user as you can see in this log so when you try to generate the reports it is basically based on the username it is not based on the group names so it is very easy to pull the information about a specific user you can do that as well but in the policy section you have to call the groups as you can see here okay we'll try to understand more about this once we do the lab right now this is just to understand the concept about user id now we are going to understand what is uh, how exactly this user is getting recognized what is a flow what is window server we are going to understand further in this okay so friends let's understand window server and will also be called as active directory now with the help of this particular image we'll try to understand more okay so there will be a server okay like as you can see over here and this will be controlling all the pcs which is there in the organization right as you can see here whatever the pcs or whatever the devices are there it can be controlled by active directory so active directory is directory of the users like let's say for an example a new employee come to office right now his email id his location his uh, group all these things will get updated in active directory okay and this pc will be part of this particular domain or part of that particular directory or window server or you can say domain right now whatever the domains or window servers allows you you can do that like let's say if you want to uninstall the software if you want to install the software you cannot do without windows server so there are certain access which will be given by windows server to you and there are certain you cannot do it right so it is basically controlled way okay now from windows there are so many things that you can do it but from palo alto perspective or user id perspective what we need to learn is like all the informations will be stored in the domain okay and the domain will be basically part of that active directory and where all the records will be there now there are something which needs to done with this active directory thing so as the user informations are there now what palo alto do and how exactly it does we are going to understand in the packet flow how this information gets retrieved from the directory and how that information is relevant to palo alto we are going to understand we'll, we are going to see that okay now if you don't know what is windows server or what is active directory i will uh, recommend you to go on youtube and try to search what is active directory you will have some explanation 
and you will understand about it if you are unable to understand what i'm trying to say right now okay so for a summary windows server are the controller for the laptop or the pcs or the devices which is there in organization okay so they are the controller they are the first controller what the laptop can do and what the user can do inside the pc that can be controlled by active directory or windows server just think about it now there are windows server i'm talking about in the sense of microsoft right there are so many other companies are there and there are so many oases are there they have their own uh, active directory or directory services right linux is having other uh, mac is also having uh, different things so there are other operating systems are also there okay now let's understand how this whole uh flow works we'll we'll try to understand that okay so friends let's understand what is the traffic flow of user id how the traffic will be flowing how palo alto gets to know what is the user who is coming how he recognizes we are going to explore now okay now let's say this is a pc okay who is basically part of active or this particular domain okay as he is managing this particular or controlling the pc now every time whenever the pc logs in like the user comes here and log in to the pc the pc will send a information because the pc will be configured with the domain ip address he sends a information to active directory that i have logged in the user name he will send the user name information and the ip address information to windows server okay now why he sends us because this is how it is programmed the log will be sent there are so many other information also sent with this but i'm telling you just this one okay now i am going to configure a agent over here and also a agent over here and i'll create a trust relationship between this particular agents between active directory and the palo alto okay now as the user has logged in he sends that information username and ip address to windows server and server in the server the agent will take this information the log information he send this information to the palo alto okay now palo alto gets the information he puts the username here and the ip address here and he creates a table basically okay now this pc needs to go to dmz or any restrictive zone or internet or any other zone basically right so he goes towards palo alto firewall because he needs to go through the palo alto firewall now as in his packet whatever the source ip address will be there he'll take the source ip address and with that particular source ip address he'll try to find out what is the username okay so he has the ip address information he has the username information so with the help of ip address he'll find out what is the username right because he agent has already complicated and he created the table already now with that particular user name or the user group he will try to find out the policy that whether we have any policy with this particular user group or not or basically user name so user name and user group will also be there i have missed to uh, talk about that so he try to find out the policy now in the policy he will check the that group policy okay and then he will check whether the destination is allowed or do we have any policy to allow the destination for this particular group user or not a group policy or a group identity or not if yes he will be allowed if no it will be blocked or denied so this is the whole process which goes through all this for a summary user logs in that information comes to windows server server sends the log to palo alto palo alto creates a table 
okay with username user group and ip address the pc initiates the traffic after that like during that particular process he try to find out the table in the table he'll find out the username and then he try to find out the policy and through the policy he'll try to check whether the destination for that particular user the destination is allowed or not because in osi model the user name will not be visible or the user name information will not be there in any of the layer that is the reason this long process goes through this otherwise if the pc is sending the user information it will be easier for palo alto to find out but if the pc is sending user information this is also a risk like if you are trying to access google.com your user information will also go to him which is very risky that is the reason in osi model the user information will not be there okay so this is how the whole packet flow of user id in upcoming session we are going to see how we are going to configure it through the lab okay so in this video this is what i wanted to cover uh thank you so much for watching this video till the end and also i'll request to please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any video from me thank you and i will see you in the next thank you guys